Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this video, we're going to answer the question, is x equal to a root to this polynomial equation right here? So we have x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 is equal to 0. And again, we're trying to uh, determine whether, in fact, x, equal to, uh, x is equal to 2 is, in fact, a root to this equation. Now, what does it mean uh, for a number to be a root? Well, there's some other uh, words that are synonymous with this, but I'm not going to tell you that just right now because I want to give you a full opportunity to uh, answer this question. Okay, so clearly the answer is either going to be yes, it is, or no, it isn't. But uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section if you know how to answer this, but just put your justification, right? So if you're going to say yes, it is, you know, explain, uh, you know, how you determine that, right? And if uh, you're saying no, it's not, you know, we'll obviously explain or justify your conclusions. Now, uh, the kind of the big picture topic here is uh, polynomial equations. And we're talking about a third degree polynomial equation, which is uh, something uh, beyond, let's just say, a quadratic equation, something like this, right? If we just had x squared minus 4x minus 4, this is stuff that you will learn like in first year algebra, algebra 1. But when you get beyond second degree polynomial equations, something like this, well, this is a little bit more advanced. This is stuff that you will learn like in Algebra 2, college algebra, certainly pre-calculus. So if you're taking a math course at uh, that uh, level, okay, this is an absolute topic that you must fully understand. Uh, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. We've got x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 is equal to 0. Is x equal to a root? Well, let's see the answer. The answer is yes, it is. Okay, indeed, x equal to is a root to that uh, polynomial equation. And if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you are a certified polynomial equation expert. Okay, they'll be very impressed with that. They'll be like, I don't know what that means, but you know, that's very impressive. I'm pretty sure you'll get a lot of job offers when you graduate from college. Anyways, uh, all kind of fun and games aside, if you don't even know uh, what I'm talking about in terms of this question, okay, you're like, I don't even know what a root is. Well, let's go ahead and get into this right now. This is not, uh, I don't want to say uh, too difficult, but uh, there is some important concepts here that are a little bit more advanced, again, than uh, the stuff that you learn like in a first year algebra course. So let's go ahead and first uh, talk about um, how to check roots, okay? Now, again, uh, you might be saying, well, I don't even know what a root is there, Mr. Math Man. What is a root? Well, a root is a solution, okay, or what we call a zero. So anytime you think of roots um, or solutions or zeros, okay, now zeros are kind of x-intercepts, but basically here we have a polynomial equation, right? It's set equal to zero, and we're trying to solve this polynomial equation right here, okay? So we're looking for the solutions, we're looking for the zeros, we're looking for the roots, and uh, kind of a couple big uh, picture concepts here is that this is a third degree polynomial equation. So the first thing you want to be uh, thinking about is that we have this thing called the fundamental theorem of algebra, which basically says, hey, look, you got a polynomial equation here, it's a third degree, so there will be uh, three solutions. Now, what type of solutions? Well, you can have real number uh, uh, solutions, or you can have complex or some sort of combination between the two, complex or imaginary numbers, right? Now, we're kind of talking about you know a lot of different uh, subtopics when we um, are discussing solving uh, polynomial equations, but these are just some things that should come to mind for, uh, for all of you out there. Like, okay, I got a polynomial equation, third degree, I know I have three solutions. so. Uh, oftentimes, you know, you might be facing a, a test question uh, that, uh, that might say, hey, find the roots or find the solutions, find all the zero, uh, zeros, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, uh, in this particular case, we're going to just use the word roots because that's a pretty common 
description. And there could be some technical differences uh, to these words, but basically, effectively, uh, when you um, you know hear or see the word roots, we're talking about solutions. Okay, so how can we check uh, if we have a particular number, right? In this case, we have x is equal uh, to two, and we're, we're just kind of asking ourselves, well, hey, is this, uh, a root to this polynomial equation. Now, this question isn't, uh, you know, this way. Let me kind of erase all this here. I'm not saying solve, okay? Well, I guess one way to, I didn't put this in my little kind of uh, uh, setup here, but one way you could check the roots is to solve this equation, right? Solve it and then see, hey, is, did you get x equal two as one of the answers, right? So that is one uh, technique, but there's some other techniques that are um, easier and uh, more direct to check whether, in fact, a number is a root in a polynomial equation. So the first uh, way you could do that is to evaluate that particular root. Okay, so in other words, you could just plug this in, this number two, in for these x's right here, and then you know uh, kind of clean up this side and see if it's equal to zero. Okay, in this particular case, so you know, uh, just like when you check a solution in any equation, if you plug it in and the left equals the right in terms of its value, well, then in fact, you got a valid solution. So that you could do that. Uh, another thing you could do is you could actually look at the graph. And this is, you know, if you had a graphing calculator, you could graph this uh, polynomial. Now, I don't know the actual graph of this, but, you know, we said uh, x equals uh, 2 is, a, in fact, a solution, right, or 0. So you would see that the polynomial, the graph of the polynomial would intersect at two, right? So you can kind of hover your little um, uh, cursor there on a graphing calculator, or if you did this by hand, you know, uh, it would be very difficult. You would in fact have to solve this to know x equal two uh, is an x-intercept, a zero right here. Uh, but anyways, that's one kind of approach you could do. But if you had a graphing calculator, you could just quickly graph it and then hover your mouse over where the graph crosses the x-axis. And if it crosses at two, that's uh, you know another kind of way you can kind of verify that this polynomial, uh, that this uh, number is in fact a solution. But these other methods, okay, kind of pale in comparison to this method here, and that is synthetic division. Now, evaluating polynomials is pretty easy. Now, if you had a graphing calculator, graphing a polynomial, uh, you know, equation, and then looking uh, to where it crosses the x-intercepts, now that would just give you the, any real number solutions. But really, the main idea of this video is to get you to remember using synthetic division because that's how you quickly check roots, uh, check to see if a number is a root. Uh, in a uh, polynomial equation, right? We want to uh, use synthetic division. It's an awesome little shortcut here, but uh, let's go ahead and see how this works. Okay, so how do you use synthetic division? Well, the first thing we need to do is make sure that our polynomial equation is in standard form. In other words, it's written to highest to lowest power. So we have three, two, here's x to the first, and then we have number uh, number here. Now, if anything was missing, let's say there's, there was no x squared here, and let's say this is what I had right here, we would have to substitute a zero, okay? Zero for uh, x squared, but in fact, we do have an x squared, okay? So we just have happen to have all the terms here, but there, if there wasn't, you would have to put in a placeholder uh, zero for that missing term, right? We gotta have all the powers uh, in decreasing order uh, represented. Now what we want to do is look at the coefficients of each of these respective terms. So here we have x cubed, we have 1x cubed, so we're going to just um, put the uh, coefficient down right here. So this is 1, this is a 1x squared, so that's 1. This is negative 4, so we'll have negative 4. And then here we have negative 4, so we'll put a negative 4 right there. So you want to just kind of list out the coefficients of your polynomial written in standard form. Okay, now we don't, you're not just going to write it like this. In fact, you're going to write it like so. Okay, here is the coefficients. We have one, one, negative four, negative four, and then you're going to draw yourself a nice little L type of uh, figure, just like this. Okay, so be nice and neat about it, and make sure you leave enough space right here uh, that you can put numbers in. Okay, so stylistically, you don't want to be, you know, like okay, I'll do it like this. That's not good enough because you, you, we're going to have to put some numbers right underneath here. Okay, so, you know, neatness counts in mathematics. So nice and neat, 
you know, give yourself a good amount of room right here. Don't make it too much room, but basically the same kind of uh, font size, if you will, that spacing right here, just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna check X is equal to two uh, into our uh, synthetic division setup. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this right now. And this is awesome, okay? All right, so this is just a quick kind of crash course on synthetic division. Uh, if you need additional help with any of this, I'll, I'm going to leave the direct links to my courses uh, in the description of this video. You want to check out Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus uh, to get like full instruction on all this. Okay, so what we're going to do is once we have this thing um, all set up, you're going to take the first number, which of course is 1, you're going to drop it down right here. Okay, that's 1. And now you're going to follow, follow this little procedure. Okay, so here's how, here, this is, of course, it starts with taking this number, writing it down like this. And now you're going to take this number 2. We're checking for x is equal to 2. Uh, we're going to synthetically divide 2 into uh, this polynomial. Okay, so now I'll uh, tell you when we get done with this procedure how you can determine whether, in fact, 2 is a uh, root or not. Okay, so we're going to do the division right now. So we're dropping the 1 down like so, and you're going to go 2 times 1 is what? Well, 2 times 1 is 2, all right? And you're going to put your answer to this first step right here. Okay, now the next thing you do, you're going to add down. So 1 plus 2 is what? That's 3. Okay, and now what do you think we're going to do? Well, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, but now we're just going to go, instead of 2 times 1, we're going to go 2 times 3 is what? That's 6. We're going to put the answer right here, just kind of scooting over just like this, and you're going to repeat the steps. So now you're going to add down like so, and we're going to have negative 4 plus 6, which is what? Positive 2. All right, so what do you think we're going to do? Well, we're going to repeat the procedure. Okay, so now we're going to go 2 times that 2, which is what? Well, that is 4, so we're going to put the answer right there. And then, of course, we're going to add down. Now, our last column right here that we're adding, okay, this right here, this is what we call the remainder, all right? So negative 4 plus 4 is 0, okay? So if you get a 0, all right, well, let's just kind of do it this way, regular 0, and there's no confusion. If you get a 0, that means that this number is uh, a solution to that polynomial, okay, is a root. Okay, if you get a zero. Now, why? Well, there's other theorems. You got to know about the remainder theorem, the, the factor theorem, et cetera, et cetera. But just basically, you need to understand, oh, you got a zero there. Therefore, this number is, in fact, a root uh, to that polynomial. Now, another way you could do this is to evaluate, right? So if we're checking for x equals 2 is a solution, well, here's our polynomial. We can simply plug in 2. Uh, where all the x is at and just kind of do the math, right? So 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is uh, 8, and then we have our 4, and you can see everything will cross cancel. 8 and negative 8 is 0, positive 4, negative 4 is 0, so 0 is equal to 0. So when we plugged in 2 here, it worked out. Now you might be saying, well, this is pretty easy too. Why, you know, why go through all the business of uh, synthetic division? Well, this is an easy example, okay? In more complicated polynomials, or uh, numbers, <laughs> we were using a nice little number here like two, it can get much more exciting or a lot more work to evaluate and plug things, especially if we don't have a calculator. But with synthetic division, I mean, this is an awesome little tool. And that's why you learn it, okay? This is why it's taught. And uh, synthetic division is actually a subset of something called uh, polynomial long division. Now, if you are kind of thinking to yourself, man, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you just gave me a lot of information. You know, maybe you have some smoke coming outside or your head like that. Listen, you know, it's a lot of information if you're trying to just learn all this at once. You're like, well, you just gave me a bunch of stuff to learn. You know, that's a lot of stuff. How do I actually learn this? Well, you're going to have to learn it one step at a time. You're going to have to put some effort into it, right? So the first thing is you need to get, you know, good instruction, good detailed instruction. That's what I like to do on YouTube, but my best, more kind of formal, complete, comprehensive instruction is going to be in my math programs. So that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing is you need to have notes and, you know, have all this stuff written down, see how, you know, multiple different examples are done. 
you know, different example types. And then the third thing you need to do is practice. You have to do the homework problems or practice problems, you know, basic problems, medium level problems, and more difficult problems. This is what, you know, you need to do in order to change this into a nice, lovely, happy face, right? Wow, okay, I get it. And imagine, right, once you learn this stuff, you can charge your friends maybe like $5 for every 15 minutes to help them out with their homework, right? Being a math tutor is pretty awesome. Uh, matter of fact, when I used to tutor, uh, I don't know if you know what tutors go for, but, you know, it's not uncommon for outstanding math tutors, you know, especially for more advanced math, to make up like $100 an hour. That's crazy, right? Well, that's not, you know, uh, really that crazy uh, because there's a lot of, you know, you know, people with math degrees and you're kind of talking about high school level math teachers that, you know, charge that kind of a mountain, right? So it's a lot of work. So if you're like, well, I'll just hire a math tutor, that can get pretty expensive pretty fast. Hopefully you're going to subscribe to my channel and watch all my uh, free YouTube videos, right? I'm on YouTube constantly. I got probably a couple thousand videos, you know, I've been on YouTube for probably 10 plus years. So I teach, teach, teach. So whether it's me or someone else, you know, get all this kind of free information. All right. But to really kind of distill this down, you know, in a way to, uh, you know, when you're really getting serious about mastering this stuff, uh, you know, at that point, you're going to want to consider like formal full instruction. Okay. But either way, make sure you, uh, you know, don't give up. That's the main idea of this video as well. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.